Ben Horner for MBTV here with Ryan Walsh. How are we getting on? Good, thanks, Ben. It's now nearly a week since you fought defending your British title for the first time. Something you said to me beforehand was, um, "It's going to be different going into the ring and having someone trying to take something from you." How did you, how did that like play on your mind through camp? Um, I've been that challenger. I've, I've been in the ring looking at a guy wanting something off him. And that's um, a massive incentive, something that <laughs> until you've had that situation, so you've been in that situation, you can't really understand it. So I, I've seen that look at the way in with Darren, had everything to gain, nothing to lose, all the pressure was on me. But like the fighter that I fought, that pressure sometimes brings the best out of certain fighters. It did with my opponent and I'm sure it did with me. I felt it did with me. I feel like I like pressure, I like, I like, I like to have a lot of expectation. I put expectation on myself anywhere, but between me, my team, mainly Liam and Michael, I, I had made a prediction it prior to this fight. I'm I'm very happy to say that I am um, done. I up, up, upheld that prediction. I upheld it to them too. I was looking to do a couple of things, and I've done them. So yeah, I'm happy with that. Going back to um, a few days after winning the British title and knowing that. Um, fights are now going to start coming thick and fast how did that make you feel you know like it's been such a long time where you've not had anything and now everyone wants to fight you yeah I'm buzzing um, I've got something that any, if you're British you want that belt it's just a beautiful belt fortunately I'm not sat here with it because they come into my change room and took it off me <laughs> so they can engrave it they didn't even have to fight me it's, um still bugs me that one but I've got to go and get that title now and get it out right but Looking back and reflecting on everything, um, I'm buzzing with, with the way my career is going from. I had a really slow two years after after losing the British title uh, challenge and Commonwealth title challenge. And uh, I had to work patiently, I had to be really patient. Um, it's paying off now, I'm happy. And I should be fighting within 90 days. And I've, had, I've, quite, I've seen tweets and Facebooks of some fighters. I want this, I want that. I ain't gonna deny anyone a shot, so I'm hoping as long as my hands are good after fights, as long as I'm still in good nick, I'm just looking to fight as soon as possible, you know. Going forward, um, something I've read and many people have sort of brought up, um, your next opponent, boxing in Ireland, his promoters sort of made clear that he's gonna win the purse bid, he is gonna be the one to promote the show in Ireland. How does that make you feel like to be going over to a different country, if that comes off, obviously? Oh, well, if that does happen, I'd be over the moon for a start, first and foremost, business-wise. If he ain't bids Frank Warren, he's going to have to bid quite a bit, isn't he? So that's financially brilliant. Um, but going back to what I was saying at the start, this pressure, I have to go to another man's backyard and the Lions then as the champion. Well, I know I've probably done it once, and it wasn't successful when he went to Ireland, but I'm sure I'll, I'll go and... Um, I'll grow under. I'll grow under pressure. I'll, I'll, I'll shine. Uh, that's that'll be my intention. I've, I've looked into Tennyson a little bit. His record. I've not seen much of him. Not in fact, I've, I've, I've never seen him throw a punch. Actually, I've just looked into him and who he's fought and bits like this. Um, he was meant to fight Darren, which would, for me, that'd have been ideal if he had fought Darren, because then I'd have been able to see him. <laughs> I'd have been able to work out roughly. So I've seen a bit of Darren online and that. So I'll, I'll be going in slightly blind, but I mean, he's a 15 fight pro, so he's going to be half decent. He can clearly punch his record, suggest that. But if he does get his own way, and I do have to fight him abroad, and that all does come off at us, I think overall, financially, for the character I am, it'll tick a lot of boxes in my career that I want to tick. I want to go be the aware fighter. That's why I was chasing, that's why I chased Josh Warrington out off, off the perch of the British title because I was willing to go to Leeds, I was willing to fight him in his backyard. That's never changed. If that, that, if that opportunity come up, even though he ain't really got nothing I want right now, he's vacated everything that I wanted. So that's, unless that was made for a, some sort of eliminator and sort of big time, what, what would it do for my career? Nothing. So it's a fight that I still, it's stylistically, me and Josh Warrington would be a great fight, I think. Yeah. He's a very good, fit young fighter who's going to come to fight. And... Um, Maybe somewhere down the line that will happen for something big, but I'm not looking past tennis and that's all neither. That's just stylistically a fight that anyone with eyes who understands boxing knows that me and Warren's going to be a great fight. Um, I'm going to look for some footage of tennis before I 
get carried away with other fighters and see where I'm at with him. But yeah, I think it could take a lot of boxes, definitely. Tennyson is um, young, hungry. It's gonna. Everyone wants that British title, but you know, someone of that age um, won two titles already in his pro in the professional ranks. Do you think that he's going to be more fired up than anyone else out there? You know, he's in a mandatory p spot. He's won two titles. He's young. He's going to want to be pushing on as much as possible, trying to get to the top of the game as early as possible to then su sustain it and have that lifestyle, you know, the lifestyle that most casual boxing fans know, the, the lifestyle of being that world champion. The, do you feel that's going to even drive him on even more? Definitely. He's young. He's got, he's got to be hungry. But um, I can't see him being any hungrier than Samir. I can't see him being any hungrier than Darren. Um, he certainly won't, couldn't be physically impossible to be as hungry as I was in both of them fights and certainly against Selby. So I'll, I'll understand exactly where he's coming from. Um, I think he, the, the big, the, probably the biggest difference with him compared to all the fighters I just talked about is he seems to carry real power. He seems to be... A, his record suggests he's got real power and this is nothing new to me I have a brother who's had 11 fights and 11 knockouts so that that'll be something that won't be no shock to me I know what real power is to deal with so and then I've got an older brother uh, a twin brother who can box a bit so anyone who knows boxing knows he can box a fair bit so I'll be more than ready for what I assume I've not seen him fight so I can't make I can't make no predictions. I can't make no, no early. What I have I'm trying to think of the word, but I stick. I, I can't make no predictions with Tennyson. He's complete unknown. But looking on the hall, it looks like he's a big puncher. He's quite young. He's got a bit of experience. Who's gonna come? No doubt to try and knock my block off, which is there's easier things to do in the world of boxing to than knock me out. So he's he need more than that power. He need more than just turning up and being able to dink me and that ain't gonna happen that ain't gonna happen too easy so like I said I wish he would have fought Darren before me and I would have got Darren and then I would have been able to see but I, I wouldn't discount Darren from coming back neither I think he if he can if he can stare in the gym stare for because he'll come again and we're hoping after the last fight that he'll come and get out to Tenerife and do some work with us because I can see the dimensions he has and the way he fights, he'd be, if you put him in an egg guard and some big gloves, you can have some hard, hard, good quality rounds with him. So that's something we're looking for in the future. Going to back to fight night, or the day before, you're weighing in, um, coming bang on, like you, could, you couldn't go any closer. No. Um, something I spotted, as soon as you come off the scales, a lollipop. Yeah. Is there reasons behind it? Because it also happened at your the previous fight. And is there reasons behind that? Or it, well, it's it's um it's quite new that actually. It, it's something I was discussing with my dietitian girlfriend <laughs> and brother. Um, I have to say a big thank you. Not only she sat here in the room, she done her job well. I told her when we were going out on the flight, like I've been met, I've been dating really well for the last two years properly. I mean, all fighters. So I pretty much haven't yet to meet a, a fighter whose day out of, out of out of a eight week training camp is brilliant. And what I've done in my career, I've started to try and learn from from find balance. A lot of young pros who are watching this will know. So I bang on about and find some balance, and uh, that's the key. Outside of boxing, find that balance. I live in gyms, you know. Boxing is my life right now. It will be when I've finished as well. I love boxing. I'm a huge boxing fan. Going back to that about the, the about the lolly. I was in Tenerife, and um, with my diet, it's very strict. You know, really, really strict, and it was getting on my nerves. And I, we all need a little bit of sugar. It helps keep us. You know, I get moody without sugar. Everyone does. If I had take like when I this like when I get rid of sugar in my diet, I'm like any normal other person. You get you get you get annoyed, and it turns out like a couple of little hard boiled sweets like a lolly, a Werther's they can really like <laughs> do wonders for you can make you feel a little bit better so the second the weighing was done I come to the weighing with my lolly and then it was that tight I had to get rid of my lolly <laughs> which was strange because my scales have never ever been wrong my scales are right and then we had a set of brand new scales on carpet so at two ounces 
without my boxer, which would have made it, I'd have been, I was what I was, yeah. nine stone flat, which I'm really happy with because in my last fight, I was just under nine stone and I don't like that. I want to be, give nothing. And Samir was nine, nine, he was nine stone flat. Like I said to a lot of people, that was one nil to him. I was furious. And on this occasion, it was one nil to me. Darren come in 125 and 10 ounces and I was 126 no more you know that was it 126 I was really happy with that it gave me it made me feel good through to fight night um, I know you've said sort of prior that you you didn't really have much to do with the ticket sales or knowing how many people were there or whatever but you, you know there's going to be a large following you're in oh, them oh. yeah you hope there's going to yeah. be the large following you, um, yeah. you're in the changing rooms um, wait, waiting to come out and you get given the nod you know to make your way to the ring what was going through your mind then, going into your first title defence? Always pressure. But it's a, pr it's a pressure that since my very first fight, m my debut, I've had to sit in the changing room for three and a half hours. I've watched both my brothers from the XL arena, like you're quite far away, get knockouts. And uh, all you want to do is relieve that pressure. And it's the same with the night. But I was far more, I'm far more experienced now and I could deal with it in a I don't know if it's a better way. I mean, my debut was over within 30 seconds, so I dealt with it a different way then. I've dealt with it more professional, calmer way this time. But um, I did have extra pressure on me on this fight because I'd, I'd talked to my brothers who do all my tickets. Um, and on this occasion, I had, we, we ran out of tickets. We didn't have enough tickets. It was unbelievable. Um, and that's something I really enjoyed. I enjoyed the fact that on my first top of the bill, we actually didn't have enough tickets. And that meant that there was an interest. People was... And I'm top of the bill, and I know there was a good of good fighters, and I've watched the bill today, and it was a good show, and there was other good fighters on the bill, so obviously they were coming to see them as well. But I, anyone who's top of the bill must see it the same way as I see it. That's, that's my bill, you know. That's my show. This is I'm the top of the bill. I'm I'm gonna put on my best performance, and hopefully, if I do my job properly, it'll be the best performance of the night. That's what I was hoping. Um, I know if Patterson might have something different to say, <laughs> and he did box really well. I thought I've just watched all the card. I thought of all the lads to see. Um, I was impressed with that Smith. I thought even Archie Sharp, even though I couldn't recognise him, I sparred him. But God, he's grown, he's got so much bigger. So I thought overall the bill was really good. Um, Frank Warren and Queensbury must be buzzing because they had a packed house, the atmosphere was good. They've got the biggest flag on the circuit yeah. out there again. <laughs> yeah. um, no one's got a bigger flag than that. That's my cutsman, Adam Geely. He's his, in his invention. That He's got the best flag, we've got the best flag. I think pound for pound the best fans the loudest and I, and I said fans and it annoys me when I said that because I don't say right it's friends and family <laughs> this is why they're so passionate that's why they're so loud ten of them on the balcony I play football with the next day it's far deeper than fans who I don't know I don't see it's people I enjoy spending time with and people who when they spend their money I know that they're just spending it on me there's quite a few in there in, that, in our group the family I mean they'll openly tell you we're not boxing fans we come to see you that that's that's precious to me. That means that you're gonna spend your hard-earned money. And more importantly, your your time. You're never getting time back. We can all earn money back, but we can't get our time back. And uh, when I'm going out to the ring, I'm always mindful that I must make sure that everyone who sat in that seat didn't sit there and go, "This is boring. What's he doing?" And uh, my hope my hope is always to be entertaining, good value for money, and make sure that when I do see these my friends and family, I won't call them fans, that they're happy. And, and usually if I'm happy, they are happy, and I was happy. It was um, uh, it was a magic night, and as it, as it's getting further away now, because I mean, what checking to make sure it's Wednesday today, it's it's gone so fast, and that I think that's a sign that I've had loads of fun. Because it's a uh, time flies when you're having fun. Well, how is it Wednesday? How is it Wednesday? <laughs> I mean, it just seemed to two seconds ago I was in Tenerife. You know, it's it's unbelievable. So I flew. You've gone from the changing rooms. Um, something I just sort of mentioned to you before we went on the camera. Um, I noticed you stop prior to walk your ring walk, and you always so try and focus on the opponent in the ring. Um, following on from that, as you're entering the ring, the, the gloves get pushed on, and then it's the the, the Ryan Walsh thing over the top rope. Um, why why is that stage by stage? Is that something you've done from day one or I don't think it might be just as I'm getting a bit older and we getting more experience. I'm trying to soak it all up. I'm trying to use the energy of the crowd. I'm trying to 
trying to enjoy it because until I vote them ropes, it's still just all part of the entertainment. It's still all part of the act. It's still all not really real. And from the second I hit that canvas, that's it. And I and uh, I know it's nicked from Eubank, but I can understand why he done that. I I I'd do it inspiring if I. It, I, that's the way I want to enter the ring. I want to enter that ring, in in that manner of right. Now it's time to switch on and um, do enjoy the ring walk. And they were mental. That song was specifically for one fight, one of the family army, who um, I've, I wish I'd have remembered on TV to say to him like, dedicated to him. He's had a, you know he's a really nice lad. Um, he's called Chris Long. He's proper sound and he's had a real hard time. You know he lost his dad. He lost his dad recently to cancer. He's lost his mum and such a nice blog and it turned out that prior to this fight he'd been on site and that song had come out on right. and they would know he started singing iron ryan yeah. iron <laughs> and, and that's the reason i had that song one for him and two because where did that come from this this is this it's not premeditated as such it's something that he'd done off the fly and then there you go and i probably will always come out to that now thanks to him and i thought i've just what like i said i've just watched it back and it was really enjoyable to see my mates having some fun on a friday night and the fun was, I was, I was part of that fun. It was pretty amazing. <laughs>